Hi everyone, welcome to Learning Safari Live. I'm here with my friend Quillo and we're gonna give everyone a chance to um, hop on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the fun stuff that we have going on at Pacific Animal Productions before we dive into my very, very special friend here. So first of all, today has been such a fun day because we just finished our first ever week of virtual summer camp. It was so fun. So we had about 14 kids with us and they were here on Zoom. We did a Zoom Afari summer camp and we did it Monday. Oh, bye Quillo. We did it Monday through Friday and today was our last day and we had so much fun. It was such a great group of kids, super engaging and it was everything we wanted it to be. So because it was so successful and so amazing, we have added new dates. So we have July dates and we also have August dates for a Zoom Afari summer camp. It is an hour and a half, Monday through Friday, every morning. <laughs> Look, he's sniffing that plant over there. And um, we learn about different animals from all over the animal kingdom. And actually, our Zoom Fari kids got to meet Quillo today, too. So because we had him in the zoo studio, I said, you know what? We're going to let everybody meet this handsome fella today. And actually, we've met Quillo before. So if you've been watching every single week and every Monday and Friday um, since March, you might have met him before. But we're back because he's so awesome. We had to show you guys him again. So don't forget to sign up for Zoomfari Summer Camp. Um, it is geared to ages 6 to 12, but you know what? Everybody can have fun with Summer Camp. Quillo is here to tell us that today. Now, Quillo is the super sweetest porcupine ever. So if you ever meet a porcupine, I don't recommend putting them in your lap like Quillo is doing right now. But Quillo is a 12-year-old male, and we've worked with him for quite a long time. And he's been around humans for a while, and he just is super, super sweet by nature. And also, I've been around the zoo today, moving around, sweating a little bit, so I'm kind of smelly, and he probably is like, whoa, you smell funny. So today we're talking about adaptations, and if you watched us on Monday, um, Trainer Jen was here with our Fennec Fox, showing us all sorts of adaptations from a fox, and today we're going to talk about the adaptations of a African crested porcupine. So before we get started, you guys, we love questions, and I want to hear all of your porcupine questions. You can ask me any animal question. I'll answer anything. Um, so ask us any questions. Let us know you're there. Uh, we're happy to answer and interact with you guys for sure through Facebook Live. That's my favorite part of Facebook Live, so be sure to do that. So today, again, we're talking about adaptations of African crested porcupines, and the first one is pretty obvious, and he's showing you them right now. Look at those quills. His name is Quillo, which is perfect because he's got definitely a lot of quills. And those quills are used to, well, you guys tell me. Put it in the comments. What do you think he uses those quills for? You'll notice that he's got some big quills and some small quills. And he's also got this really cool mohawk. And those ones really aren't spiky at all. They're kind of more like just like awesome hair. So speaking of hair, his quills are made out of keratin, just like your and my hair. And he is going to use those quills to, Meredith, do we have any guesses? Not just yet. Oh, not yet. Okay, you guys, be sure to guess. Let me see if I can get our disappearing act to come back. Hey, Quill, come here. Come here, Quill. <laughs> he totally went on the other side. Oh my gosh, he's so funny. Let's get him back over on this side. Here we go, Quillo. So as you guys are thinking about that, we're going to talk a little bit about his adaptations today. Now those adaptations that he has help to protect him. And if you guys said protect him with those quills, you're exactly right. Guys, we call this segment loose animal in the studio because that's what's totally happening right now. But luckily it's just Quillo. He's sniffing around. Now these guys don't have great eyesight. There we go. Look, he's taking some leaves with him. Look at that hairdo. So he has so many adaptations and one is that nose. So he is definitely using that nose in the studio and that's why he needed to go explore. Because you guys, we've had animals all in the studio for summer camp and he's smelling them all right now. There we go, have a carrot. So like we were saying, he uses his quills to protect himself. When he's out in the savanna of Africa, he could be coming across leopards, lions, hyenas, all sorts of crazy, crazy animals, and he needs a way to keep himself safe. Now, look how he's using his paws. If that's not the cutest thing you've ever seen, I don't know what is. Oh my goodness, Quillo. 
So he needs a way to protect himself because he is showing you guys those paws. Are those going to be good at climbing? I don't think so. So instead of being able to climb up a tree, and the pace we saw him moving at is a little bit slower than top speed, but he's still not that fast. So those quills oh, are able to protect him. Now what he's going to do is he is going to move forward. The predator might come up from behind, and then he's going to stop right in his tracks. Those predators might ram right into those quills. That's going to really hurt. Those quills can be 1 to 13 inches long. So they are really, really uh, sharp and able to protect him. A lot of people think that he can shoot his quills like a bow and arrow, but really he can't. He can open it up from his follicle and allow it to stick in his predator and not in him. So if you've ever yanked your hair out and it hurts, it doesn't hurt him for his quills to leave the follicle. Meredith, do we have a question back there? Yeah, Adara wants to know how many quills do porcupines have? Ooh, how many quills do porcupines have? So they can have up to 30,000 quills. 30,000! Oh my goodness. So you can see that actually he's got really, really thick fur and hair, fur, quills, and hair. And so about 30,000. And all of them are hollow and made out of keratin, just like your hair and your fingernails. Yeah, another question. We have another question. Can they shoot their quills? Oh, can they shoot their quills? So no, remember, they can't shoot them like a bow and arrow. Instead, they can just release them from the follicle so that it doesn't hurt them to leave their body. Um, so they can't shoot them, but they can open up the follicle and have them leave which is why it gets a little confusing. Everyone thinks that porcupines can shoot them, but nope, they can just release them from the follicle. Great questions, you guys. So we were kind of saying as he moseyed around the studio a little bit, that's the thing about animals, you guys, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, but when he was going around, we talked a little bit about his nose. He has a super big nose, kind of tiny eyes, and let me see if he'll let me show you. He even has ears right there, and they kind of look very like human human-like ears. He's even got like the lobe going on. So his tiny eyes, he doesn't have the greatest eyesight, but that big old nose has an excellent sense of smell. And like I was saying when he was uh, taking a little tour, he has a great sense of smell and was probably smelling all the other animals that were in here today. So he really relies on his nose to move around and his hearing. Excellent hearing, excellent sense of smell. Not so great eyesight. Actually, he's basically almost blind which makes him a really interesting animal to work with, especially for training purposes. Not only are we zookeepers and educators here at Pacific Animal Productions, but we're also animal trainers. And because he can't see, we have to train with sounds or smells rather than visual cues. So he is a, actually, you know what? I was gonna say he's a challenge, but he's also super, super smart. So he's actually not that challenging to train. He's actually super smart, this guy. You'll also notice, Meredith, I don't know if you can see there. I can try to get out of the way. He's got some long claws. These are digging animals, and he will dig down into burrows and uh, rock formations, and that's actually where he's going to uh, keep himself safe too. So those claws could be considered an adaptation as well in order to keep himself safe and hidden and, um, you know, just nice and cool where he lives. I did see, I think someone asked how old can they live? So um, that is an excellent question. He can actually live to be 20 years old and he's 12 years old right now. So he's not really an old guy, but he is an adult. He's not gonna get any bigger, but this is the largest type of porcupine in the whole world. And he's a rodent too. So even though he doesn't really look like a rat or a mouse, he is related to them. Does anyone know what the first largest rodent in the word, world is? Comment below if you know. Meredith, do we have another question? Yes. Maria is curious what they eat. Are they car carnivorous or do they just eat veggies? Great question. So he is an herbivore. So he is going to eat, right now he's eat, eating a delicious carrot. He eats a lot of root, root vegetables here at Pacific Animal Productions. Um, but in his natural habitat, he'll be eating lots of browse, which are leaves from trees. He'll be eating any type of shrub or green he can find, fruit or veggie. He'll also gnaw on bark because of course, as a rodent, he has ever growing teeth. So he needs to file those down by eating roots or again, bark, gnawing on something that's a little bit harder um, to keep those teeth from getting too overgrown, allowing him to still eat everything he needs to. So you won't really see this guy munching on any meat out there in his habitat. I hope the microphone is picking up his um, crunching. I'm going to be quiet so you guys can hear because he has the cutest crunching sounds, I think. 
Ooh, I don't know if you heard that, but he did it really uh, loud right there. Thank you, Quillo. It's like you knew what we were saying. So, guys, if you have any other questions, go ahead and put them uh, down in the comments. Meredith, before we kind of wrap up here, do we have any others? Does he know any tricks? Oh, Amanda was curious. Um, he does not know any tricks, but you know what? Uh, they are actually excellent swimmers, and I just said to Meredith, maybe we should give him a pool and see if he could swim. That would be kind of a trick. But um, nope, he doesn't know any tricks. Instead, our animals here at Pacific Animal Productions are trained to do behaviors. So behaviors are a little bit different because they are usually something that we train them to do in order to show everybody um, their natural behaviors that they would do in the wild. So he doesn't really know any tricks, but he is one of the things that most of our animals here at Pacific Animal Productions are trained to do is target um, and he was really fun to train to do that because again he can't see very well so we needed to rely on sound in order to do it so to target train he's trained to put his nose to I have a tennis ball on a long stick and he's trained to put his nose right to that tennis ball that way he can move around with us when we want him to go somewhere specific as you can see in the studio, we kind of freestyle it today. Um, but that way, if we ever needed to get him to safety or get him evacuated in case there were any concerns here at Pacific Animal Productions, he's trained to follow that stick wherever we need him to go. Um, so not so much a trick, but more of a husbandry behavior, we call that as a zookeeper. That was a long-winded answer, but you know, once I get started talking about training, I can't stop. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us again. We'll be back on Monday. Trainer Sierra will be here introducing you guys to another animal ambassador. We'll talk more about animal adaptations. Look at this mess he's making today. We're going to have to clean that up, you know. Now, um, of course, guys, we said we have summer camp. We also have another paint along with Paco. That's coming up on the 27th. And there's still tickets available, but just a few. So get those on our website, PacificAnimalProductions.com. We also have an activity that goes along with Quillo today, so go to our website, again, PacificAnimalProductions.com in the Kids Corner. You can find all of our activities there as well. Otherwise, you guys, thank you so much for joining us, and have a great weekend. Let's keep learning alive.